Let's run it from the top. All right, here we go. Salute to Nick Station on this Thursday evening. Another edition of KFTV's Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com and use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Just a few games remaining in the regular season, but for these New York Knicks, it is playoff time, it is money time, and that is the way that this Knicks team went into Boston to handle business. This Knicks team having lost all four of the regular season matchups against the Celtics, had to get a win in the win column. The Celtics were playing the injury bug game, but the New York Knicks didn't matter. It didn't matter if they had Larry Bird out there or Jason Tatum out there. They were all going to get the smoke. And led by Captain Clutch, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Bogey, and the gang, the New York Knicks were able to handle business in just about three quarters. And before you knew it, it was a 30-point game, man. So it became, became a bum night. And the Knicks took care of business, man. 118 to 109. We got our sights set on the number two seed. Giannis and Dame, what are you going to do with it? Let's talk about it, man. Call us up, 657-383-1509. Or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord, man. CP the Franchise, Alex Chitaro's here. Money time, man. I, 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 I turned this game on. And the lady was like, man, are, uh, are you, you know, are you, what's going on? You know, you into this game? I said, listen, it's playoff time. It's playoff time. It's money time. Mm. You know, it's just the magnitude of the moment. You know what I'm saying? CP, it's, I was locked in like it was a game seven matchup today. All right. That's how like I game felt seven, like. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great time, man. It's a great time to be a Knicks fan. So, you know, as I opened the show, everybody was kind of, Wondering what would the Celtics do? Are they going to play their guys? You know, you and Noah talked about it in the game of the week preview. Great job on that. And late, you know, last minute, it was announced that they were going to start all their guys. But good credit. I, I like how the Knicks came out there, um, handled business. They were in the passing lanes early. Good job by OG. You saw DiVincenzo get into the passing lanes and get some steals. I thought another big thing key here for the Knicks was their ability to dominate the glass. On both oh, ends. Oh, for sure. Holding the Celtics to one shot. And on the second, on, on the offensive end, um, getting the second chance opportunities that would allow uh, Brunson to score and Hart and DiVincenzo and so on. And so um, just, just a good way to approach this game. Yes, you can argue whether or not the Celtics came out to play or not. But look, this was about the Knicks going out there taking care of business. You have no room for error now because playoff seating is not set. They can they mm -hmm. can go all the way up to two, or they can go all the way back down to six. So just a great job by the team as a as a whole, just staying focused, locking in, and taking care of business, man. And I think that's the key, CP, on this matchup is staying locked in, staying focused for playoffs. That's definitely how this team came out ready to sh to shine. I mean, Jalen Brunson, man, thirty nine points 39. tonight, dude. And they did everything. They doubled him. They put Drew on them. They put he put they put Derek White on him. They tried to throw every single coverage to stop this guy. They could not stop him. He's in playoff mode. You see that he's ready. Everybody else came prepared as well. I mean, you talked about the rebounding CP. You know, Knicks out rebounded the Celtics in the first half, thirty two to seventeen. Yeah. Want to talk about offensive rebounds? Knicks out rebounded them twelve to three on the offense. Twelve when to came three to, on the in the play. first half. Yeah, you know you had Isaiah Harnstein, Josh Hart, uh, Mitchell Robinson, all just snagging boards. Like it, it was insane the way that this team came out prepared for this matchup. And I don't want to hear from Celtics fans, man. You know I had I had some Celtics friends texting me right now. Like, mm, what are they, what oh, are they know, talking? What oh, are they talking? You know, man? They trying to downplay. You know, we don't got to play for anything. We they, don't got to do are anything. Are they sounding like Kenny Smith tonight? Yeah, they pretty much, man, because guess what? They're like, I, and I, I don't want to hear this nonsense, like they're not playing. They played three quarters, CP. Yeah. This team was regular for three quarters, okay? Yeah. I don't, and look, I know that the, the league has their rules about playing for primetime games. They were, they got kicked in the mouth. They got punched in the face. They yeah. didn't have an answer for how to play against the New York Knicks. And we didn't have Julius Randle, but they still had their two stars out there. And so for them, you got to say, 
for Jalen Brunson and the rest of the New York Knicks to go out there and compete like the way that they did. All right. And to, 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 you know, take advantage of, you know, the schemes that Joe Mazzulla was throwing out there. You saw KP wasn't guarding Hartenstein in the first half, yes. right? They had him on Josh Hart and different and players Dinkin to Chenzo begin with. At times, and, yeah. and then you saw, guess what? If you're going to have that, we're going to make sure we get boards and we're going to just give the ball to iHeart so that way he can score and figure it out. Okay. And so for the fact that you got a good game plan just to, to counter what Boston was doing, I like seeing that because you see Tom Thibodeau is getting ready for the playoffs. He's like, yeah. how do we counter this adjustment? Counters. Counters. How do you counter this adjustment? And he's showing you right now he's locked in. You saw how pissed he was with the, the, the third unit in the fourth quarter where they're just giving up threes left and right. Yeah. Everybody's dialed in, man, that's bent and ready to be in the playoffs. I mean, we even had Bogdanovich go off. Bogey! He how about, had the reverse how way about the of like MJ. joint. It was like a little re, like a little MJ with the switcheroo, with the switching hands. My goodness, man. This team yeah. is this team is on one, man. I, I love what the New York Knicks are doing. I, like, if you are a fan, you got to be hyped after the way they played the Boston Celtics tonight because they're yeah. ready. And if I'm a Celtics fan, I would be a little concerned, man. If you're yeah. telling me that they're upset because uh, this doesn't matter to them, you heard – this is the one thing I'll agree with with TNT. You mm -hmm. heard Chuck saying, hey, yes. they had the, seat, the Suns had a great record. They took it easy, and they didn't perform they wanted to in the postseason. Yeah. If that's how the Celtics are going to treat this man, that's why I still don't trust this team – from a, like an, as an NBA fan, as someone who, you know, as we cover the league at, at, at large for the NBA report, that's why you can't trust them. Can't trust yeah, them. I, I agree. And that I, I agree with you there. Like the one thing that I did, um, you know, appreciate the TNT guys saying was that for the Celtics, like, you know, are they going to just – they can't just turn it on and, and turn it off. Turn it off and turn it back on come playoff time. So, you know, that's that's for them to worry about. Now, the defense uh, soundbite is going crazy right now in the show uh, for good reason. Maybe not for, for a good reason for the listeners on, on the pod the next day. But shout-out to Nixon Dimes, who just gifted 20 franchise channel memberships across the board. So they are in a giving mood. They are ready – for playoff time and it's literally money time for them because uh they have just gifted 20 people in the chat with franchise channel memberships so <laughs> the, the sound bite is cycling wow. through all of the people who uh who received the memberships and, and it's it's just now registering so uh, appreciate nixon dimes for the support definitely so to everybody in the chat once again hit that thumbs up button for you boys uh what's the number for tonight for the people in the chat are we putting in a three Based on where we are, are we putting in two? Because we want that two seed, Al. We want that two seed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get back to... I'm going to get back to the game. This was a bum night, man. We, you know, we blew these guys out. Whatever. I'm going to get back to that. But we got to look at this, the standings. No, 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 no. Steve, don't, don't, don't yeah. do that. Don't do yeah. that. I, I'm hyped over this game. No, no I, listen. I'm, I'm hyped. Of course, I'm hyped. But, it, you know, they, they took care of business quite quite handily. So I want to look at, the, uh, look at the, the standings real quick and just take a quick look at, at where we are, where things stand. And, you know, the Knicks are still within a game of the two seed, mm. of the Bucks, And it just came out today that Damian Lillard, Al, is questionable tomorrow, or, or doubtful, rather, wow. tomorrow when the Bucks take on the OKC Thunder on the road. No Giannis for the rest of the regular season, right? And no Dame against a Buck against a Thunder team who is still trying to win that number one seed in the West. Yeah, that could be a big win for the Knicks. For sure. Holy cow! No yeah. Damian Lillard for tomorrow. No Dame. No. You, oh, you didn't hear that? That's news for you. This is news to me, man. Yeah. You know, I was locked in for the game. I was locked in. But okay. hey, got you, got you, got you. This is that's huge. If you're not going to have Damian Lillard, this is that's great for the Knicks, man. Yeah. Especially when you have what should be. A cakewalk on Friday yeah. against the New Jersey Swamp Dragons. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, Knicks just got to take care of business from here on out. You took care of the two tough opponents this week with the Milwaukee Bucks, the Boston Celtics. You now have the Brooklyn Nets and the Chicago Bulls to finish off the season. Just if the Bucks lose tomorrow, which they should, because as you yeah. mentioned, look, OKC's third right now. They're a game behind Denver and Minnesota. So, you know, they want to go out there and win. They want to take care of their business. So if they if there's no Dame, they should win tomorrow, giving the Knicks an opportunity, man, to get that two seed yeah. in. Look, Tom Thibodeau, you heard it on the broadcast tonight. They're moving along as you know everything still as everything still matters. They're not yeah. slowing down. So 
Go, uh, go OKC Thunder for tomorrow. Go OKC <laughs> SGA. We believe in you, big. Uh, uh, what, what's his name? Chet. You know, they got the commercial out now. Good for them. We believe in you guys, man. Go out there and handle business. And then the Bucks finish against the Orlando Magic. Who's going to be hungry mm-hmm. to get a win and solidify their playoff seeding? So this is not over yet. It can go a lot of different ways. We'll, we will go into the different combinations a little bit later on in the show. But for the Knicks, their goal, keep winning. And win the next two. Bucks lose the next two, and we'll get it. We'll get the number two seed. Uh, the Bucks do own the tiebreaker, so that's the only way that the Knicks are going to get up to that number two seed is that the Bucks are going to have to lose out. But it is, it is pretty, a good possibility that that could happen. So we'll talk about that and, and the potential matchups that, uh, that could come about there. Call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Shout out to Bobby Tachio on the chat, all of our franchise channel members. Shout out to Big Nick Energy in the building. Shout out to Son from Brooklyn, Rare Edition Salute. And, yeah, man, make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel. Second quarter, I liked how things started to come about, to, to, to unfold for this team in the second quarter. Uh, with Brunson on the bench and OG on the bench, it became Josh Hart's time. You saw a lot of good things from Hart, both as a scorer, as a facilitator. Shot the three, which was good. Mm-hmm. Took a couple of threes tonight. Took a couple of threes tonight, which, is, which was encouraging because when the game started, you know, we already know that his shooting wrist is hurt, but then he was grabbing his left hand like right after the first play of the game right? for quite some time. So that was a little bit of a concern. But nevertheless, it seems like he got through it. He took four threes tonight, made one, and one of them came in the, uh, the second quarter. 16 points, 16 boards, and five rebounds in 32 minutes, a plus 18 for Josh Hart. Um, just a great job running that second unit, and I think that allowed – that took some pressure off of Bogdanovich, who got going in the second quarter as well, and, and I liked how they were moving, man. Deuce McBride was in with that unit as well. Mitchell Robinson was out there with them. Uh, I like how they were flowing. Uh, good job by Josh Hart tonight, man. Absolutely. Josh Hart, I mean, he came out there – I think after he hurt his wrist too, right? You see him get that layup underneath the basket, and then he starts grabbing boards left and right, man. Like, there was no tomorrow. Josh Hart's just a warrior. At this point, you got to respect what he does for this team, man. Truly has stepped up in Julius's absence. Yeah. Josh Hart continues to show why he's worth that contract that he got, man. And, you know, even with all the questions that we had for Josh Hart, like, at the beginning of the season, even during the middle of the season, he's now starting to come into his own, like we saw when he got traded to this team last year. And now he's starting to be that big, have that big presence again. He is, you talked about it, he's going to be very much in, uh, a critical factor when it comes to the postseason. And he's showing you right now that he's getting ready for the postseason as well. I mean, scoring tonight, 7-15, to 15, he was just efficient tonight. But the 16 boards, CD. 16 boards. Six and five assists to pour in on that. Yeah. And a steal. This guy is tough, man. Yeah. This guy is built like a warrior. You know, Woo. can't talk about, can't talk enough about him, man. Most important piece outside of Brunson, man. Most important piece outside of Brunson, bro. Yeah, Shout out. But you know what was really impactful mm-hmm. in this game, CP? And we got to give our shout out to OG Ananobi. Yeah. Because yeah. in 26 minutes, you know, and this is the key matchup I talked about in yesterday's Game of the Week preview. Yep. OG versus Jason Tatum. And look at these numbers for Jason Tatum. CP mm-hmm. five of 13 from the field, one of seven from downtown, only 18 points for one Jason Tatum. And here's the big thing, CP. Here's the, the big thing out of this game in the second quarter. Jason Tatum played 12 minutes. He played the entire second quarter, mm. played the entire second quarter. OG Ananobi in there for eight minutes. Mm. And how many shots did Jason Tatum take in that entire second quarter? Two. Yeah. He wanted no parts. He, he did not. Yeah. Soft CP. Yeah. He, soft. He wanted no parts of the dog. Soft. No okay. Parts. O, OG's Ananobi's presence on this team. OG is just, it, dude, give me Boston in the playoffs, man. Because mm. Tatum is going to have, he's going to be in witness protection yeah. when OG's on the court, as we saw tonight. You know, we this is the first time Tatum's gotten to see this Knicks team with OG on the floor. And that's all you can do. You can only muster up 18 points. You're supposed to be that guy. Yeah. You keep talking about being Kobe. But, you know, there's there's apparently a guy who can stop you. And, and nobody can stop Jalen Brunson, which, you know, CP, in that turn, 
That's why someone should be, uh, you know, first team all NBA over Jason Tatum. That's why he should rightfully be in the top five MVP conversation over Jason Tatum. Jalen Brunson is just better than Jason Tatum. I mean, how easy was Brunson's offense today? <laughs> <laughs> like, and he's going up against, to me, the best defensive uh, backcourt in the league. And it, it was just easy money, man. It was just absolute easy money. I mean, there, there were shots that he turned down that I thought were wide open, especially when, when, the, when the Celtics were in deep drops. They were, they were in deep drops with Porzingis. They were in deep drops with Horford. And, and Horford, you know, he's trying to come back from injury. But, I mean, he, he was looking like a shell of himself. And uh, it, it was just, just simple. Simple offense from Jalen Brunson, man. Picking these guys apart. 15 of 23 from the field. Continues to shoot the ball efficiently. Four dimes. And then and then uh, drew three charges in this game. One of which was originally a, a foul on him. Mm-hmm. And then it got overturned. So he picked up three. Now on that play, he was holding a shooting wrist. Yes. <laughs> so. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh, man. You know, that that's tough. But he, he ended Family up. Family show, CP. Watch the language. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, hey, when you talk about Jalen Brunson and injury, you know, you can almost yeah, throw the family show stuff out the window. But, uh, you know, he did come back to the bench, and hopefully he'll be ready to go on Friday against the New Jersey Nets. Dude, and the thing is that they show that replay of him grabbing his wrist, and then Brunson comes back in, or he was on the court, and the next thing you know, he just – Drills a three, and you're like, ah, oh, no, he's fine. yeah, Don't worry about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, uh, so yeah, that was his night. Easy dive for Jalen Brunson. It really didn't seem like these guys were even sweating. That's how easy it was for the New York Knicks, man. One eighteen to one oh nine. I mean, it was pretty much a thirty point lead. Yes, the Boston bench did come back and you know try to make a fake comeback out of it. By that time, I was setting up for the show. I was barely even watching it because it was garbage time at that point. So, good job there. How about Boyan Bogdanovich, man? 14 points, 6 of 10 from the field, 2 of 6 from downtown. Bogdanovich was so good. People on Twitter were like, CP, can we call him Bodega now? Can we call him Bodega? He was good tonight, man. Great job by Bogdanovich, man. You know, I sent that tweet out tonight where I was like, Bogdanovich trying to earn that he's, nickname he's, Bodega. He's got to earn tonight. it. He's got to earn it. So did he get it tonight, CP? Is he Bodega? <laughs> no. I'm not giving Ooh. it to him. Not giving it to him. Does he have to earn it in the real garden, not the I fake think garden? he's got to earn it in the real garden. He needs his MSG moment. And no better time than now because the playoffs are coming up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That would be spectacular. Do it at MSG. They need him. They're going to need him. Right? They're going to need him to be aggressive, be a shot creator outside of Brunson and Hart. He's probably the most capable shot creator that they have on the team. So they're going to need it. So I want to see him do it at the Garden. Do it at the Garden. Blow the roof off the joint. For a couple of games, not just one. You know, even, then we can call him Bodega. Give me two good games at the Garden. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. This yeah. is what he did in the second quarter, by the way, where it was just where he was very crucial yeah. in those 11 minutes. He had he went four or eight from the field, two or six from downtown, got you three boards, got you ten points. That that's what he did in the second quarter. But the way that he was getting to his spots, man, it yeah. was like he was either like a like a locomotive on full steam, go, getting downhill with that reverse that he did. It yeah. was you know looking for the mismatches. You saw the one where he had against uh, Peyton Pritchard, working the post. I mean. Bogdanovich looking, is looking real comfy out there right now, man. He's looking real it's comfy, good. and he's had a solid week so far. He's coming off the bench and scoring. Hopefully yeah. he can keep this momentum going into the postseason. As of right now, it's looking like it's going to be that way. Yeah, tr- true indeed, man. Uh, shout out to Philip Gonzalez. Says, not Bodega yet. He's got to do it in the MSG in the playoffs. Son from mm. Brooklyn agreed. <laughs> Ace one NR says, slow Dega. <laughs> slow Dega. <laughs> <laughs> slow take <laughs> slow take <laughs> Chad is ruthless Chad is ruthless man and <laughs> Nicholas Joseph says he is bodega now that reverse okay so he was impressed by it by the reverse the reverse was smooth man it, it, it was definitely smooth Yo, I was that like, was shocking I was like there's no way yeah. that's going in and then it drops I was like wait yeah but, uh, but you know what it, it's, it's those type of nights from those type of players where you're like okay he's feeling it tonight the 
he's going to be on one. Just keep feeding him the rock. Yeah. He, he should be good. He should be fine. Bo- Bodega was in his bag. And uh, good to see. Listen, listen, you're on the road. You're in a must-win situation here. It's all hands on deck, and he's and he's going to be an important piece for this team. So good job by him showing up when the team needed him. And Boyan Bogdanovich would finish with 14 points, three rebounds, six of ten from the field, two of six from downtown, and only one turnover, which I thought was key there. So um, good job there. I, I liked how the Knicks got out in transition, man. You know, that has to be a way for a team that – it could struggle for offense at certain times in the game, in games. Got to play fast when you can. You know, and, and that's that's another, you know, byproduct of the Josh Hart, of Josh Hart and, and getting Josh Hart his rebounds. And also when you have turnovers, or you force turnovers rather, between mm-hmm. OG and Dante DiVincenzo, got to get out and transition to get those easy buckets, man. It's a good job. Yeah, today. absolutely. And it's not even like the Celt- like because I, I really want to know because the final game numbers for this shows that the Celtics got 19 fast break points mm-hmm. compared to the Knicks 16. But I really want to know what it was up until that third when quarter. When it mattered. That four- yeah, where it mattered because yeah. the fourth quarter, you know, that second unit was just getting out in transition pretty frequently and knocking down threes left and mm-hmm. right. I want to know what it was like for those first three quarters because it looked like Boston was having difficulty – attacking in the Knicks defense in transition. And that's something we got to talk about too, because the Knicks have been much better getting back transition in defense. transition and yeah. slowing down opponents from getting these easy looks. So the fact that the Knicks were able to do that against a top offensive team, like the Celtics not being fully healthy. Okay. Yeah. And that you're able to go out in transition and score on this team. That's huge, man. I know it's led by Josh Hart, but you're going to need other guys to, to, to help as well. Like Dante is another guy that can help get you out in transition. So, although I, I, I saw your tweet saying that you'd rather yes. him shoot the three than try a layup. And I agree with that. <laughs> but, uh, I, I mean, know. am I bugging? I trust even Tenzo from 30 feet than I do from three feet. Am, am I lying or not? You're not lying. You are not lying because good war. When it, when it's, when it, it's like, there's no in between either CP. It's like, yeah. It is either way off, like it is ricocheting off the backboard while you're like you're playing billiards. Yeah. Or it's a or it's a nice like finger roll lay in. And it's yeah. it's nothing ever in between. Marie's in the background saying I stole her bars. That was definitely her bars. So then you know, whatever. Oh. Whatever. That's man. a ghost rider. That's a yeah, ghost that's rider. That's my right ghost rider, man. You know, whatever, man. Don't just don't be like Drake, man. <laughs> Salutes everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for me, boys. CP to Alex on the ones and twos. Two more games left, guys. How are we feeling in the chat? This was a good win to continue the momentum for sure. Shout out to Frat Guy 1906. Oh, it must be an alpha man. Shout out to him, man. Franchise channel member Paul Lawson, franchise channel member. Welcome to the franchise channel memberships. Shout out Christian B, another franchise channel member. This must be all from Nixon and Dimes' as gifts. We got everybody's a member that sent Super Chats. Uh, says Brunson is in God mode right now. Yeah, it just seems like everything he's hitting right now is, uh, is, is just pure, man. The efficiency is off the charts. $20 Super Chat from Iris Cox says we compete any team. Our defense will make the three-point shooters tired. Let's do it. Sin 097, 10 out Super Chat says, King Tibbs, put some respect on the old man's name. Go Knicks. Shout out to Tibbs. Great job with this team for sure because I, 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 I'm surprised, man. I don't know about you, but to see this team weather that storm of all the injuries – and you're looking at the standings, and they're one shot from the second seed in the East? Crazy. That's crazy. It tra- among trades, amongst trades. They made two trades this year. You yeah, know what I mean? Is, which is a lot for them. They yeah. usually don't make them that, that many trades. Right. So it's it's not like you had, you know, just all this chemistry and everything. They made new trades, whole, a big trade in terms of trading RJ and Quick. Those are big pieces to your offense. They bring mm-hmm. OG in here. They don't skip a beat. You know, the, the bogdanovich Burks trade was a disaster pretty much for the entire trade. But the McBride ascension, Precious. Precious held it down for this team dur- during that time. Big time. So to see this team still there, that a lot of credit has to go to Tibbs, man. A lot of credit. He won't get coach of the year, but a lot of credit has to go to Tibbs. Man. Has to. You have to give him credit, CP. I mean, the fact that the Knicks are still competing – they have an opportunity to be the second seed in the East. 
that's good coaching. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's good coaching to get, but we know this about Tibbs, right? We know that he can get the most out of his team during the regular season to take it to the next level. And that's what's so fantastic about him. Yeah. I'm looking for, it all comes down to the postseason. You know, we talk about demons for Julius, but there's also demons for Tibbs too, when it comes to adjustments. I mean, we're going to see what he can do this postseason as well. That's where the money's made uh, at the end of the day. But phenomenal job by Tiff, yeah. man, to keep this team locked in, engaged, buying into what he's preaching. So that way they still have the opportunity to get the second seed. Second seed. Second seed. See, when was the last time we saw the Knicks in the second seed? Crazy. <laughs> and, and think, like, you know, Boston's been number one seed all year. They never had to deal with the injuries. Right? Right. Like, of all the teams, of all the teams in the East, the Celtics this year never had to deal with a major And they have KP. Goal. And they had KP. They never had to deal with it. The Knicks did. Cavs were decimated by it. Milwaukee's going through it. You know, Giannis was kind of in and out. Mm-hmm. Celtics never had to deal with that. Knicks did, and they're one game uh, within one game of the two seed. Great job. Great job by Tibbs. Shout out to uh, Rocks NYK Hot Takes. And their comment is, CP and Alex just caught my first KFTV merch. Order nice. 1971 support, bro. Salute to that man, Al. Salute to that man. And salute to everybody that's been copping their merch, man. It seems like whenever the Knicks win, <laughs> people cop more merch. So, look, man, playoff times. Playoff time is coming up. And, and you guys know what it is, man. It is New York versus the world playoff merch go ahead and get yours at shop.nixfantv.com go ahead and get yours at shop.nixfantv.com uh let me let me go ahead and show everybody the collection i had to go in and uh and uh sign into all these apps again once i restarted chrome now because you know i've had chrome open for about 30 days straight and so <laughs> I can't 30 do. days straight with 30 tabs? <laughs> 30, 30 days straight with 30 tabs open. You know, when you, you, you when you run in a live stream, a live show, you got a lot of things open. You know, you got to show the people, the sound bites. You got to do your research and everything. So er- everything's always open. You're doing your side shopping. You're doing flights out here. <laughs> yes, everything. DM said, yeah, I put my password on the screen. No, 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 it didn't come up, but thank God. All right, so anyway, man, New York versus the world. That's why Man City copped his merch. Make sure you guys go get yours, man. We have the hoodies, the New York versus the world with the dope graphic on the back, the T-shirts, both in black and white, the New York versus the world joints. Shout out to my guy, Chris Murray, world-renowned artist who did the damn thing here, man. I gave him the vision. I gave him the theme as voted on by the fans, and uh, and he put the magic to work, man. We got the snapbacks. I just had to order more snapbacks. Call the vendor like, yo, snapbacks are flying off the shelf. We need more. We need that, New York versus the world snapbacks. We have stickers and the limited edition prints. Only 50 made limited edition prints, man. So make sure you guys go get it at TV. Dot com. So shout out to uh, everybody who's been copping their merch. And yeah, much much appreciated, man. Much appreciated. We'll have an announcement on the watch parties coming up. And you guys already know, man. Playoff time. You know how KFTV does it, man. Nobody does it like us. So make sure that you guys continue to support. And we very much appreciate it. Rare edition. Franchise channel member says second seed will be first round against the Heat or 76ers would be physical series. Third series against the Pacers could be favorable for the long run. Let's let's talk about that a little bit later on the show. We'll talk about potential matchups for, for sure. I definitely did a full show on Bleacher Report yesterday on that as well. We had a good session there. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about potential matchups. Uh, let's get to the phones. Omar from Brooklyn. Omar, uh, get on mute your mic. Yo, what's up? I'm off from the Bronx. Bronx, bro, bro. Bronx. Like Sorry, man. How you feeling? How you feeling? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. What's good. up, guys? Good. So, bum night. I mean, it's nothing really to talk about the game. It was yeah. wash night. Yeah. A real quick, man. Kind of a hot take. I was watching the game on TNT. Yo, like, their broadcast is trash, man. I'm not even trying oh, to be funny. Oh, Kenny like, was hating on us again. Man, he didn't even want to go to the board. Come it wasn't on, even that. It was like halftime. Brunson just went off in the second quarter. And again, I'm not even trying to be funny. It's yeah. halftime. Usually that's the time where I take a little break, make a coffee, put the kids to sleep. I was like, let me check in. Maybe they might talk about what's going on with the Knicks. They're blowing them out. The first segment was like Chuck going on for like a minute and a half about how, uh, you know, Boston, like, you know, they're just resting guys yes. and I've been playing hard. I'm like, man, they were blitzing Brunson the entire game. 
pressing full court. It looked like they were playing hard. You can't tell me they're completely cakewalking. Maybe towards the end they did. So I'm like, all right, whatever. That's usually his gimmick. They yeah. pass it off to Shaq. Then Shaq, he didn't even mention the Knicks. He's just talking about some old Miami Heat story when he was <laughs> on the team. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. The yeah. only time they spoke about the Knicks was, you know, when they're cutting away. They make a, made like a little quick thing. Oh, you know, Brunson, he's having a great season. Like some generic thing. They, they just literally off. cakewalked the entire halftime show. It was an embarrassment, man. I, I said on Twitter, I said, you know, Brunson had 18 points in the first half. Cooking in the mid-range. Top 10 in the NBA in mid-range shooting, right? And, and you look at a top 10, it's all wings, okay? Yeah. How do you not take the opportunity to go to the board and show your casual fans, here is a star on the rise in our league. Here is why he's so effective despite being an undersized guard. And here's how he is terrorizing the league. How do you how do you miss that opportunity? Agreed. Instead, they it's, want to talk about old war, war stories. They want to talk about Sh- Charles being ringless, the same stories we heard for years and years and years of the show. <laughs> right now, we, we've been hearing about that for 20 some odd years. Oh, we got more rings than you, Charles. And, and, and just style around in suits. Yeah, yeah, it's borderline unwatchable. They still yeah. do that whole, like, worn-out, running-to-the-board gimmick. Like, it's just yeah. it's, it's unwatchable at this yeah. point. Last thing, I know we're going to talk about later on the show, but you guys hit the nail on the head, I think, with the, with the comment, the super chat. Yo, like, there's no difference between the two and the three seed. I know, yeah. like, getting 50 wins sounds, like, you know, really nice. Being the two seed sounds nice on paper. Between the two and the three seed, there's no difference. You both no, you really get isn't. home for either way. You avoid the Celtics round one. Yeah. Depending on how this works out, ideally, I'd rather the Heat and the Sixers stay at seven to eight and let us play the Pacers round one. Let the yeah. let the top teams duke it out and then let them do our dirty work for us. We stay uh, the three seed, face the Pacers or Orlando, whoever it may be. That way, we don't have to be in a dog fight for the first yeah. round. Yeah, or Orlando or Pacers would would be would be ideal to me for the first round, right? All the bravado aside, let's let's you know let's just keep it a bean. I'd rather go after the inexperienced team. And the teams that, you know, we are clearly better than. But Miami yeah, seems either. to be sliding right now, man. Yeah, I don't trust it. Miami <laughs> seems to be sliding. I don't trust it. You know? Still don't trust it. I do not want to see Miami in the first round. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I me don't neither. want to see Miami in the first round. But, yeah, give me the inexperience with either the Pacers or the Magic. Give me the Cavs as a, for a rematch again. You know? Yeah. Uh, those those are the teams you'd want to face as a uh, as a Knicks fan, just because I'm not saying it's guaranteed to the second round, but it's in your favor since you don't have Julius. You know you're still shorthanded. As great as Brunson has been, you still want to make sure that you know that you can. That you there's a little bit more confidence in the role players showing up in those matchups because they're seasoned, rather than you know thinking like, all right, the rest of the Magic team is going to show up in the postseason like. I would rather trust Dante, who has experience being on the Warriors, even though he didn't do so great last year. You could say at least he can learn and come and bounce back from that, as yeah. we've seen from other players in the past, rather than Paolo and Franz and their first team, first time being in the postseason and, and trusting them to to go all the way. Agre- agree there. Certainly agreed. Um, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Shout out to Amir Riven. He's on the shop right now and sends us a message. Keep up the good work, guys. Mad respect to you. Shout out to Amir. Shout out to Nixon Dimes, Al. Send us a super chat. They just gifted 20 franchise channel memberships. Then send a super chat. So they're active here, man. Big diehard fan of the show. Says, my New York versus the world snapback is on the way. Order 1934. Salute to you, Alex and CP, for everything you do for the fans. So people are dropping. <laughs> they're not just dropping what they copped. They're dropping their order numbers now. Salute. Salute, man. Salute to everybody for the support, man. Me- means a lot. At least I'm not the one giving away uh, potential gifts here, right? So, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think they're, I think, they're, I think, I think they're telling you the order number, CP, so that way they know. Please get to mine first. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. They want their first. Uh, they want theirs first. So that that's that might be what it means. But either way, man, yeah, everybody's going to get their merch. And uh, yeah, once again, appreciate everybody for the support. Eric Atlas, go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, man. How you doing, man? Celebration tonight. And also, um, shout out to Chris Murray because the design is super sick. Yes, sir. Um, and you guys, for not compromising on it. Because when people see you in the public with the KFTV merch on, they're like, yo, what is that? And then you get to tell them. Yeah. So everybody in the chat, you guys got to go cop that. Appreciate it, man. But anyways, um, shout out to Tibbs. He would be coach of the year this year if he didn't already have two on deck. 
That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And Boyan, is is it happening? The Bodega nickname. I got to say in his defense, <laughs> if we end up getting 50 <laughs> wins, it's because he buried them mid-game. So, hey, yeah. Bodega might be opening up. Bodega up might be opening up. I got to cook. They inspired me to cook. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Bodega might be opening up. Did we ever give a nickname? Because because I, I he he I feel like he's a player in transition, right? Did we ever give a nickname to a player for like half a season worth worth of work? No, I don't think we have. <laughs> I mean, listen, we we've we've done much I mean, worse, the... right? Like we've developed hives for players who have been absolutely terrible basketball players. But you know, have we ever given a nickname to a guy who for six months of work? I mean, we gave. I mean, I would say Josh Hart. You know, got a lot of what was it fanfare last year, but it was okay. with his own last name. It wasn't anything like yeah creative. It was like you know, with, especially with the heart to heart connection. Yes, right? like that's we'd get that, but it's not really a, a true nickname where it's heart to heart connection. Yeah, heart to heart. You know, somebody gave him you a heart to heart connection. Yeah, man, that was a Josh Hart nickname. No, 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 no. between him and Hartenstein. Oh, you mean Where the Hart they? Foundation? Oh, the Hart Foundation. Yeah, see, you oh, okay. use a young whippersnapper, oh, yeah, man. You wouldn't get the rest. Yeah, that's what I – okay, that's what I figured that you meant, man. But, you know, yeah, that was before your time, man. You, you ain't know oh, when when the real Hart Foundation was in their prime, man. The hitman was locking dudes up in the sharpshooter. And then you had the anvil come out. He had the, the you know, the long goatee in the beard. He was, he was crazy, yoked out of his mind. That was the real heart foundation, but I understand. I'll I'll give you a blight, man. I'll, I'll give you a blight, bro. You oh, didn't know. Thank you. You did not know. You did not know. Thank it's you. okay, bro. Uh, as a seasoned veteran, I'm I'm glad that you're so generous yeah. at times. You to, did to not really know. teach you me and, and give me all this knowledge. Yeah, thank it's you. okay. It's okay, man. It's, it's okay. Appreciate it. Don't don't. But worry. anyway, yeah, yeah. I don't think I think Bogdanovich, unless uh, Burks, you know, who who seems to be buried in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you I know mean, that call. Said, put him in the trunk. Tibbs is. I mean, what was that trunk. Did they I mean, CP in in a in a in a blowout game? He can't even get minutes. I mean, did he even make the trip? I he, he was there. He was in warmups. <laughs> I haven't seen my guy in a minute, man. Did he even make the trip? I mean, I mean, they they moved Jacob Toppin up on on the seats. He might he might be sitting with the trainers in them on the baseline. I didn't see my guy uh, uh, a a b man. Oh, he was there. He was in his warm-ups. He didn't have to take them off at all. He was cool. He was chilling. Put him in the trunk. Put him in the what? He's out of there, man. Put him in the trunk. He's he's out of there. He, he's out of there, man. It's all right. You know, just, you know, he came in for a tryout. It didn't, didn't work, man. Didn't work. He's, he's, he's not a good fit right now, you know? It's just not a good fit right now. You know, he, where, where the, where's that classic line from? Is that for like a job? You know, we, we just yeah, don't. It's not a good fit. It's just not a good fit for us right now. You know, I, I could see Tibbs giving him that locker room. Speech. Could be a relationship, too. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just not a good. Fit. We're just not a good fit. You know? Yeah, we're just not a good fit. man. So that's uh, that was that for uh, Big Money Burks in his next career. But we will thank him for game one of the playoffs a couple of years ago, whatever. Uh, Nick and Nack, fight out Super Chats. It's Jalen Prunson is taking us to the finals. Gentlemen, he is changing our franchise. Hey, we got a good one, man. Can't take him for granted. Owen A, 10 out Super Chat from a franchise channel member says, we should aim for the sky. Nick should keep marching to the two seed. Nick's can see anyone in game seven. Props to you guys. Great stuff as always, fellas. Salute, man. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Omar from the Bronx. It's like, you know, I, I don't think the two seed means much more than just, you know, prestige and bragging. But matchups wise, I don't necessarily think it it helps to, to get there. But, hey, you finish where you finish, right? We could get the 50 burger. And all in all, it, it would look pretty good. So we'll take yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it'd be another notch in the accomplishment from Tom Thibodeau, right? To say you got this team to 50 wins, too. Not only did yeah. you get them to the second, you know, second seed, but you got them 50 wins. That's just a notch in the belt. I don't know. Like, the only reason 50 wins at this point, it would be cool, but it's more so for the fact that Knicks could be anywhere from two to six right now. And yeah. That's the only reason why they're really fighting for this. I mean, if they if they had a clear shot to be the number two seed or they were just locked in and there was no maneuvering, I wonder if Tibbs would just – actually, he probably would, as we saw, like, last season. You just start resting guys towards the end of the year. Remember how we had 
Grimes quickly and top and all golf for 30 points each. You know, we just saw all the uh, all the kids just get out there and play. So yeah, the fact that the Knicks are still competing for for seating to lock something up, it's very likely this team can get to 50. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys, man. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. We are talking 50 burgers. We got 3,300 people in the chat right now. The number one wow. show for the fans by the fans is on and popping right now. Hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel. We are talking Knicks with you guys, man. Call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord, and the phone lines are buzzing right now, Al. But phone lines are buzzing, but the franchise channel members, remember this, for, especially for you new franchise channel members, because Nixon and Dimes just gifted 20, 20 of you guys memberships. If you go onto the Discord and connect your YouTube account to the Discord, we're going to have to do another refresher, another crash course. When you go into the Discord and connect to YouTube account as a franchise channel member, you will have access to what is called the Members Lounge. It's on the left-hand panel of your Discord. The Members Lounge, it's like your easy pass. It's your fast pass to get onto the show, skip the line, and skip everybody else because that is what you paid for. That was one of the perks that you paid for. So we're going to go to the Members Lounge on the Discord right now and get to Rambo. Rambo from Tampa. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and unmute your mic. We got to hear from him. Let's go. Man, you guys, let you know what time it is. You know what time it is. Let's talk about it. Man, let's talk about it. First things first, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and invite everybody right now. Your mamas, your aunties, your daddies, your brothers, your sisters, your baby mamas. Let's go. All of them. Tell them all, come on. Let's go. Okay? Because right now, right now, we need to get ready. We need to get prepped, and that's all I've been doing. I've been whining and dining. I had to take a step back. I failed you guys with the Miami meetup. Yeah, okay? man. But you didn't pull up on us, man. I was looking for you, man. Man, listen. I, I, I'm, ju- I'm just. I, listen. I'm just as disappointed in myself. Yeah. Sorry. As you man. are in me. Sorry, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm You're still gonna family, lie. bro. It's nothing. Be 100 honest with you. Yeah. But it's all good, and and, and that's why I had to take a hiatus. Okay. I make sure I do everything I had to do. Okay. And then you know what happened? Then the Julius thing came out, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Nobody wants to hear an optimistic guy when you're yeah. mourning a loss. So I said, you know, I'm going to take a step back. And okay. then I, I knew the fans were going to come in and be like, oh, we don't need Randall. And all that. I said, you know what? Let me just let all that let all that go. Yeah. This is about playoffs. Yes. Okay? Okay. This is not a bing-bong year. No. Mm. I want everybody in a, in a suit, tie, all black. Shicey mask. I don't want nobody wilding in the streets of New York. I want everybody dead silent, just in black. Let's go. We have business to finish. Mm. Okay. Talk about it. Talk about it. Let's talk about Boston. Mm. I've been told you guys this. Every time they beat us, they do crazy numbers from the three. Yeah. Tonight, tonight they couldn't do it. And while we're on the topic of Boston, let me bring up a player I always hated. Mm-hmm. Coming out of Boston, but, but when he made a move out of Boston, I, I was able to appreciate him. Tom Brady. Mm, okay. When they won the Super Bowl out here, I know I'm switching sports, but stay with, okay. with me. Yeah, yeah, when we they with won you, the we Super with you. Bowl out here, Super Bowl out here, right? When right after the NFC Championship, some unnamed player was crying. Tom Brady said, "Why the f are you crying? The job is not done." Me guys, I need y'all guys to stay focused. Yeah. Let's go. Down. Every city, neighborhood, I don't care if you got a 55-inch or a 35-inch, yeah. I need you to get everybody. Yeah, let's do it. Be member. I need you guys out there. This team deserves this right yeah. now, bro. Let's go. This, now, uh, we want the second seed. We want yeah. the notch in the best. Let's go. Just, uh, throw some fives this in the chat for Rambo, respect. man. Throw some, throw some fives in the chat for Rambo. Now, Rambo, I got to ask you something, man. Because you, 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 you said you've been doing everything that you have to do, right? You know, you got wifey at home. Maybe you got to take the garbage out on time, do the dishes. Give the fellas, you know, give them some tips. Because a lot of fellas right now, this is playoff time, is money time. They might have to be fighting for the TV, man. Let them know. What do they need to do to keep it locked on KFTV after the game, man? Because we might do like two, three-hour post game. We need everybody locked in. We need all the homies locked in. What do they need to do? first okay two games left the regular season okay if you miss the post game it's okay all podcast formats okay i can't i've been catching you guys on spotify because after the game right right now i'm sitting in the car wifey don't even know where i'm at right now okay i'm gonna be real with y'all okay 
So after the games, foot rub, <laughs> whatever I gotta do. Oh, wine and dine, date night, date night. Oh, what you got? Date nights. Come on, talk to me nice. Hey, what 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 have, what, what what has your lady been listening to? I just bought Mariah the Scientist concert tickets. Why they're still cheap and she's not really you know popping like that? Okay, we could do that. You know, con- you know, just little stuff. It's the little stuff that counts. That's it. It's recognizing you're doing. Oh man, look, she got her nails done. That's complimentary. Oh man, baby, your nails look good tonight. You know, whatever you got to do. Because in the playoffs, I promise you, man, I need every single one of you guys. And if you in Tampa, man, I, I don't know where we're going, but we're taking over somewhere. We're taking over Ebor. We're taking over Sparkman's Dwarf. And if you know what I'm talking about, that Let's means go. I expect you to be there. That and Ebor it's that City. Simple, okay. That, yep. There we go. There we go. Rambo from Tampa. He just gave the fellas the blueprint, fellas. You need to write it down. Take the notes or just go back and rewind. He just gave you the blueprint, what you need to do to make sure that you locked in on TV time after the game for post game and everything. Rambo, appreciate you, man. Salute, salute. It's Rambo from That's Tampa, it. Al. Shout out to Jay Boogie, man. Yeah. Yo, this- Rambo is in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he said, wife, you don't even know her about right now. But that's what we got to do. Al. We we got we you know we got to share the game. You know we got to share the game with the homies, man. It's a very important yeah. time. Survival for kit. sure. Yeah, I like it. You gave some good tips, man. You got a compliment. You know, maybe she got her hair done. Maybe yeah. she got her nails. Done. You give a little compliment. You gotta man, notice nice. like the that. little things. Look, man, the little things. And you gotta do a little bit of dishes. Take out the garbage. You know, think ahead a little bit. Think ahead a little bit. You know, show that you're appreciative. Yeah. And the next thing you know. Locked in. Four hours. Locked in. Four hours. Feet up. You know, she's bringing you a favorite drink with a lime in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Well, not everyone can be blessed like you, CB, where you're just watching the game with a significant other who's also a massive Knicks <laughs> fan. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't have those issues. Though. We don't have to fight for the TV. We locked in on the same thing. So, thank <laughs> God for that. But, yeah, for that, not, not everybody's as blessed, you know. So, but- Yeah. But I will say this. It sounded like Rambo was jumping out the window, man. It sounded like he was yeah. jumping out the window. Yeah. And I like that energy. We need that energy we right that. now. And I want to know I want to know in the chat right now, yeah. CP. I want to know, if you're tuning in right now, who's jumping out the window? Did this win convince you even mm. more that this Knicks team is serious when it comes to the playoffs and being ready? Because it is for mm. me, CP. I'm I'm buying it right yeah, now. Yeah, you've been at it. I'm buying this team. You've been at it last week, two weeks. You, you, you know I always got to change it up with every different scenery when it comes to window. So guess what, <laughs> CP? You know, look. Springs are here. Flowers are blossoming. You know what else is blossoming? The New York Knicks are blossoming at the right time, CP. They're yeah. ready for the playoffs. They're ready to do the damn thing. That's what I. That's why I got this window right behind me, CP. Look how it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. It's looking like it's looking like a nice spring day. The garden is on the rise. The garden is on the rise. It's like a nice spring day. Where you at, man? The yeah. New York Knicks are on the rise right yeah. now, CP. And because of that, I'm jumping out the window. <laughs> out of there. Out of there. Throw some windows emojis in the chat. Throw a 50 burger. Whatever you whatever you guys want to do, man. It's that time. It is money time. Keno does it. Keno does it on the Discord. Uh, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yo. Yo, how you feeling, man? Feeling great. Feeling great. Uh, salute to the sponsors. Mm-hmm. Like, share, subscribe. Y'all know the drill. Call it up. All right. Lady D and gentlemen, we are entering our championship window. Mm. We are entering our championship window. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson is that horse that won a not not even one a. He is the one. Mm. He is going to take us to the next level. Everybody worried about oh who's going to show up. I'm not worried about who's going to show up because we got Jalen Brunson. I already know OG is going to shut whoever down. Dante is not going to shoot one for twelve in a playoff game. The only person I might be worried about is maybe Deuce. Maybe Deuce might give you a little bit of a scare. But other than that, we run it. But what I got an issue with, mm-hmm. it sound like from the chat, and it sound like you guys a little scared. Hmm? It sound like y'all scared. Y'all, y'all, y'all want to take man. the easy route. I don't care who we face. I don't care if we take the second seed, if okay. we take the third, we win 50 games. It doesn't matter. Knicks in five. It doesn't matter. Mm. Philly, Orlando, Indy, Miami. It doesn't matter. Okay. Confident God, man. Very confident. Very confident. Rest in peace, OJ. <laughs> Appreciate the call. Appreciate the call, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex. On the ones and twos. 
It's Jalen Brunson, man. Jalen Brunson. Here is here is uh, OG Ananobi's comment on Jalen Brunson. Al, he should be the MVP. He should be the MVP. Mm. OG, he should be. He should be. All right, look, I look <clears throat> at least you know top five, easy top three. Outside of outside of Jokic, SGA, and Luka Doncic, who can you say is like absolute lock? MVP candidate over Brunson right now. I agree. And I mean, to me, MVP, because this is the whole thing with this award, CP, is that every year it just seems to change. It's like who's the most dominant player, who's the most important player for a team, right? There's never been any consistency with this award. And to me, when I think about MVP, I think that if you lose this player, the entire thing collapses. Like you are, you're done. Right, yeah. that shows how important they are to a team. Makes sense for Jokic. We know how important Jokic is to for the Denver Nuggets. Um, I get SGA. I, I I can get Luca because those guys are, are needed. But let's look at Brunson's resume for a second. All right, this year you lose Julius for the remainder of the season. You don't have OG after you traded RJ and quickly. Right? Yeah. OG misses a lot of time. He comes back and then he goes back to missing more time again because he aggravated the elbow. You don't have Mitchell Robinson, your best rim protector on the court for what, 50 games. And yet after the trades with a lineup that is, you know, questionable on on some nights, right? Where you're like, can this team actually do it? Do we have enough offense? And that's what I mean by questionable, not in terms of like, you know, effort, you know what effort they're going to give you, but from an offensive standpoint, is Brunson on tonight because you need every ounce of him to be locked in for this team to win. And since all those injuries happened since January, he's been dialed in. Yeah. And this team has a chance to be second in the Eastern conference. Okay. Behind the best team, the Boston Celtics. All right. They have one of the best rosters assembled, but you're telling me that the only guy that can create a shot for himself and Jalen Brunson, has been available for over 70, what, three games at this point? Yeah. Has helped carry this team to be 48 and 32. And if they get to 50, there is no way he should not be in top five MVP voting. But to me, he should win because of everything the Knicks have had to go through this season in order for the Knicks to get there and be in the position they are. SGA, that team is loaded, man. They got a lot of talent, all right? You got you got Jalen Williams on that team who's phenomenal. You got Chet back who's changed the dynamic of that team as well at the five. Yeah. You look at you you look at Luka. I mean, you have Kyrie next to him. Granted, yeah. he's been in and out as well. But between both those two guys, that's that's a powerhouse backcourt offensively. He's had to do it alone. Brunson's had to do it alone, man. You he's don't know do if you're going what you get from Dante on a, on a night. Josh Hart, Precious McBride, Bogdanovich. You know Isaiah. Like you just don't know. And because of that, he's been the most consistent guy on this team from start to finish. Yeah. Well so said. that's why he should be top five, man. And to me, he should win. Yeah. I think if you – because if he's not playing, we're not talking about this Knicks team. This Knicks team is is not – I don't even know if they're even a playing team without Brunson. Yeah. Well you know? said, man. That's how, that's how important he is, and that's why he should probably win. Well said. He won't. He won't, but definitely should be in top five. That's a good take. We should make a reel out of that tomorrow, man. Tyler, if you're out there in the chat, man, let's clip that. Let's clip that up and make that a reel. That's a good social reel, man. Great, great take by you, Al. Great, great take by you, man. Uh, TM, check the Slack as well, man. Set you a message in the in the chat in the Slack. Go ahead and uh, and check that out. Shout out to um, Kino, ten dollars super chat. I think he just called. He said, uh, "My son's name is Jalen, J A Y L E N." He says he's 16, but if anyone asks, he's named after Jalen Brunson. It's good stuff. He's man. 16, but named after Jalen Brunson. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line right there. That's uh, like that LeBron meme where he's like, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, I knew Kobe was going to do this. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? You know that LeBron yes, meme? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it feels right now. It's like, oh, I just knew Jalen Brunson, you know, 16 years ago before he even joined the Knicks. He was just going to be great. But. Insane. I- insane, man. Crunchy Unicroma says, bro, I'm so hyped. Y- you you, and all of us, man. You and all of us. This, this uh. This guy's incredible. And remember, and Fred Katz is gonna is gonna come through on Monday. So the first nice. guest for the playoff preview show, Fred Katz is coming through. 
Uh, and remember, when Fred came on in the offseason, matter of fact, I'm going to play this clip right now. This is what we do on Knicks Fan TV. We go back in time. We do sound bites and everything. All right? This is a full-fledged production. Okay? <laughs> One producer. I'm right here. But this is a full-fledged production. And here he is. This this was... um. Oh, you know what? This It's going to take me... It might take me a little while. Hang on. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. I had it pinned to the top of the KFTV... Um, to the top of the KFTV Twitter profile, but I just changed it. Let me see if I can find it again real quick. Probably not the best use of our time, but let me see if I can find it. It is... So to everybody in the chat, hang tight. Oh, here it is. Found it. Here it is. Found it, found it, found it. Okay, here is Fred on... This was Fred Katz in the offseason. This was on October 6th. And when we, we were just talking about, you know, this is our season preview show, and we were talking about Jalen Brunson, the, the season that he had prior to. And this is what mm-hmm. Fred Katz had to say about Jalen Brunson in regards to this season coming up. And here he there is. There are important people with the Knicks who are just flat out insistent that Jalen Brunson is not at his speed, that he is going to be better. And the points that have been made to me are after January 4th, he averaged 28 a game on 52% shooting from the field and 45% shooting from three. That's three months. That's not a little hot streak in January. That's half the season that he did that. And then he goes into the playoffs and he's really good at the start of the playoffs. And by the end of the Miami series, the dude is just impossible to stop. Jalen Brunson actually had a good amount of improvement during the season last year. When Brunson showed up on day one, we were like, wow, this guy got way better over the summer. But then if you look at him in May and you compare that to November, you're like, wow, this guy got way better over the season too. There are people with the Knicks who are like, 27, 28 a game on super efficient shooting, better passing, better chemistry with his teammates is totally within the cards for him. All facts. <laughs> it's, it's all true. And that was in October. Bro. That was in October. And he got better. <laughs> all facts. I, co- I couldn't believe it. You know what's crazy, CP, is that he had that slow start at the beginning of the season, and now it's just like, wow, like he 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 is just on another level. And I just yeah. want to say, I want to give a, I want to give a shout out, CP, and I want to yeah. give a thanks to none other than Mark right. Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks yeah. because you yeah. let this guy walk, you let this guy walk away for nothing. You got nothing in return. Yeah. You gave us a leader, nothing, a dog, a guy nothing. who should be top five MVP consideration. CP, they let a guy who's going to be all NBA this season walk away. He could potentially be first team all NBA, and they let a guy like that walk out yeah. the building. Yeah. And he played, it's not, and it's not like Kyrie who misses games, even though Kyrie's been mostly healthy this season. He's played over 70 games, CP. Yeah. You let a guy who can stay healthy and be an all NBA player walk away there's a lot there man dallas mavericks there's a lot there man and for people in the chat asking i did post the link to that tweet in the chat so uh if you guys want to you know share it do whatever you will with it but yeah that was that was fred katz man that's why i like doing this show because we can always pull sound bites and especially with twitter because it's almost like a search engine so it helps us go back in time and uh, when I when I remember relevant things, I could always go back and say, "Damn, we put it up on Twitter, and then we could repost it, repurpose it." People with the Knicks who are just uh, flat out. Why is it playing again? I don't know why it's playing again. Not at his speed. I didn't even press the browser. Button. I didn't even press the button. But anyway, hey, not not like it was a bad thing, right? So uh, there it is. Salute to Fred Katz, man, and salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. I guess we should have seen it coming because. I couldn't understand when they showed up to the to the playoff game. It was like they showed up like the NWO. It was World Wide West, Allen Houston, Julius, right? It was Mavs versus Jazz. They were sending a message to the league like, yo, listen, we coming here to get our guy and take him back to New York, period. Now, a lot of us thought it was Spider. Right. And it still could be Spider. But could have been for both. Could have, been, could have been for both. But man, they came in there and said, "Hey, threw the threw the threw the ski mask on, and said we're good here. Yeah, I don't know what you have. We, we'll take him back to New York." 
and I doubt there was any tampering, CP, but the fact that the Knicks only had to pay a second rounder. Hey, we'll do it. Take it. Uh, 10 out of 10 times. Take it. Take it, take it, take it. That's why I got the Brunson jersey on, man. I, I got yeah. the Brunson jersey on go. because I always have to throw on respect when he goes Nova like he did tonight, man. Super and Nova. Especially against a Celtics team. Like, you don't even – CP, like we talk about how you need Randall out there to draw attention from the defense. The fact that they threw the kitchen sink at him. That's why I can't buy people texting me saying, oh, Celtics are resting, guys. This doesn't count. Why, da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. All this, oh, they all were this trying. Nonsense. They were trying. They on tried, yeah. and they were not successful. Yeah. Shout out to Lloyd Banks. He said they had Brown and Tatum trying to double team him. Pause. But yeah, that that's uh, he, he was definitely right on that. And then speaking of the Mavs too, Al, the pick has conveyed. The, the Christoph's Porzingis trade. It's Finally, not, it's not fully over because we don't know who we're gonna get yet. But it's 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 coming to a conclusion. As the Mavericks pick that belongs to the Knicks is finally going to convey. I'm trying to move my screen over here, but um, it is right now. As of right now, it's at number 25 in the draft. Knicks, as of right now, have number 23. So you figure the Knicks will have something most likely in the mid-20s. Two picks in the mid-20s. And, yeah, a lot of people don't like this draft, but it could be a draft where you could go in there and and get a, uh, a senior or upperclassmen that can that can assist one or two. I don't think they'll keep both, but we'll see what happens when, when the draft comes. We'll see what happens when the draft comes. You said it's currently at the twenty number twenty five. The Dallas the one is at twenty five. Mm. The Knicks CP. one, the Knicks own one is at twenty three. CP. Yeah. Who did the Knicks draft at twenty five back in twenty twenty? That would be one Emmanuel. Quickly. Mm. Now, uh, CP, yeah. who do they draft at 25 yeah. in the 2021 draft? That would be one. Quentin Grimes. If you tell me we end up with another 25th pick. I mean, both of those worked out pretty well for them. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just saying. If lucky number twenty five, hey, I'll I'll take it. I'm I'm fine with it. You know, there there was some I don't know what type of Mavs account or you know, whatever fan or something. Some type of Nick hater was on Twitter like, oh, have fun with that pick. Y'all thought it was going to be a lottery pick. You know what? Given given the Knicks track record with this regime, I'm go I'm go with the late round pick. They For find sure. they find gems. Then we do our homework over here. Now it may not work out in the lottery. We're still trying to work that part out. We'll work that out another time. <laughs> we don't need to stay out of the lottery. Yeah, we'll work that out another time. <laughs> But for the, 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 the late round gems, you see what McBride is doing right now? Grimes didn't make it here. Quick was great. Six man of the year candidate. Could have won it easily. I trust Leon and the, and the team, if they do use the picks, to go out there and, uh, and get some young reinforcements. They should. I'm with it. They should use the picks. I mean, we, we need guys on rookie yeah. scale contracts. So hopefully yeah. they do use it. But yeah. hey, just to, you know. Just food for thought. Yeah. That 25th pick. If uh, it stays there, Knicks have had success yeah. with that number. And look, you could say, yes, Grimes was a miss, right? But look, his career's not over. He's three years in the league. It's very, I don't even it's think very of him as a early. Miss. It's very early. I don't he see him so- as a miss either. I don't see it as a miss. He was solid last season, struggled this season, dealing with an injury. It happens, man. He, yeah. It's way too young of a career to say it's, it was a way through. It's too, too early. Too early to bury him, man. I'm still Grimes high through and through. Just get him out of D- Detroit. Get him somewhere uh, competent. <laughs> just get, get him and get my guy out of Detroit. Please, man. If, he, if his brother's listening, do whatever you can to burn the bridge. William Burton, $20 Super Chat says uh, Brunson is the MVP. He ca- Oh, I think I got that. Oh, no, no, no. He says uh, Brunson is the MVP. He carried his team, this team, through all of our injuries. Just ordered my playoff T-shirts and hoodie. Here's another donation to the Alex IMAX Fund. So salute to William Burton, man. He wants to make sure you go to the movies in style. And also, we got to give Alex some 80s, 90s, golden era WWF homework. You know, he started the show off. He's talking heart and heart connection. I was like, what's going on? What is what is that? I was like, love connection with Chuck Woolery? What, what, what are you talking about here, man? <laughs> we, we were very disconnected. There was no connection when you said that. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. I'm thinking the Flip Wilson show, but who, who, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Chuck will probably find that funny. Shout out to Rye Edible Chuck D. Um, yeah. I'm going to give you some homework, man. Oh, God. I'm going to give you some must-watch homework on the Hart Foundation, the Hitman and the Anvil, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. All right, I won't, I won't run off into a tangent. WrestleMania just wrapped up, so I'm still on, like, my wrestling buzz. You know what I'm mm. saying? But I'm going to give you some homework. I got the it Peacock like account. I'm still angry that I took Sting in our, in our, <laughs> in our wrestle draft, <laughs> our wrestling draft. <laughs> I gotta show you. I gotta. I gotta run back the clip. Uh, shout out KFTV Jeff. Uh, Jeff Johnson. I gotta run back the clip. Me and Jeff did a podcast. This was like 2018, back when the YouTube Studio was actually open in in the Meatpacking District in uh, in the city. Pause. Uh, and me and Jeff, we did it. We did a wrestling segment, and it, it we we almost threw hands. <laughs> <laughs> it got it got quite contentious, but it was a funny pod and a funny segment. I'll, I'll put it up there at some point to uh, as a throwback so that people can laugh at it. Uh, Pro Cannon, Pro Cannon on the Discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, you can't hear me? Loud and clear. How you feeling? Oh, man. Long time. I'm finally here. Yeah. Finally live. Let's go. Yo, we, we were waiting on tell you. Everybody out there. Yeah. Like they said, the member lounge. Simple, easy, like it's like three clicks. Yeah. In. Yeah. But yeah. Um, easy. Appreciate it. But yeah, tonight, for all those Celtic fans, I just, I just want to say thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You know, because y'all coming out here saying, oh, we, we, uh, you know, we not, we not out here doing nothing. You know, we already got our position. Yeah. But why, why is your team clapping a Brunson in the corner every time he gets to half court? Yeah. Yeah. Like for the whole for the whole second quarter, anytime you get into that little corner and half court, there's three Celtics around him. Like, come on, dog. Yeah. Like, just come on. The man is the truth. Let it be. MVP, he should be, but we we already know it's a stat driven league. So people with the bigger stats, they're gonna win. That's how it is. But hey, we here. We gonna be number two. All right, because I believe uh, the Bucks gonna lose to Orlando next time. We are gonna mm-hmm. get that number two spot, mm-hmm. and then we gonna take whoever's coming. That's okay. all it's about. Whoever's coming, we got you. That's all. Let's That's go. all I wanted to say. All right, appreciate the call, man. Appreciate the call. Kind of glad he went a little rapid fire, man. His his, his connection was bad. <laughs> I appreciate it for voting the members loud, but then he came in and like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Call back any time, but we, wow. we gotta we gotta work on your audio, Pro Cannon. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what the Celtics fan is. The Celtics fan is. <laughs> wow, you're saying that he actually sounds like a Boston announcer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you see here, we have Jason Tatum uh, bringing the ball up to court. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, shout out to Pro Cannon, though. But he's right, man. Jump, jump in the Discord, jump in the members' lounge. It is fa- pretty easy. Um, and, and if not, you know, we'll work with you guys, man. All right, let's get to the phones, man. We got a lot of people on the lines. Let's get to the phones, see what the people got to say. Let's get to uh, 443. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Rapid Fire. Let's go. It's Ron from Baltimore. Yes, sir. Ron, how you doing? Hey, um, I'm doing well, man. I'm I'm on cloud nine. Um, Let's go. I just want to say, uh, did you know what Jail- uh, Josh Hart's assist numbers have been over the past few weeks? I encourage any Knicks fan that loves this team, look at what Josh Hart's assists are. Look at what Isaiah Hartenstein's assists are over the past month. You'll be very happy. You'll be very, very happy. The ball is moving. We have to make these dudes pay when they blitz Brunson and he gets it out to that little short roll, those two dudes, if they just swing it, we have enough three-point shooters. Those two guys, they are the ones that can get us the movement, that can make up for whatever happens with this team. If I can get Hartenstein's five to six assists, 
if I can get Josh Hart's five to six assists, I can be a high assist a team and hang with anybody in the league, yeah. CP. And Jalen Brunson can still go nutty because yeah. he's making every right play. He knows. He knows what's coming now. So if I can get Hartenstein and Hart to just do what they do, that's going to be wonderful. I think Jalen Brunson is, is a more efficient scorer than Carmelo. That's no knock on Carmelo. Sure. I, yeah. I respect Carmelo and what he's done. I do believe Jalen Brunson is a more efficient scorer than Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. That's just my Easily. opinion. Um, but um, salute to Carmelo. I, and I also want to just say this. Burks is a good teammate. I still I appreciate what he's done. I do agree with keeping him in the trunk, even though I love Burks. All I wanted, CP, you knew this. He, he, he brings good karma. He's got Bogdanovich back. It was just Russ, but now you're seeing he, uh, Bogdanovich is back. It's because Burks has given him good juice. Yeah. So we're going to need everybody. It, it's a family thing. Yeah. I do think Brunson is the best scorer I've ever seen in my entire life for a little guy, mm. but he's going to need help, CP, because you know they're going to blitz him like crazy, and we need the assist from the other dudes. That's yeah. all I got. And, and that's – appreciate the call, Ron. And that's why I say Hart is outside of Brunson. He's the most important. Not, not, not because OG's not. Obviously, we know OG is very important, right? But you know what you're going to get from OG, right? Like, you know at the very least he's going to be able to chew, lock up defensively or else, or at least make it tough for a guy on a night. Hart, to me, is more important because he's got to do everything. He has to do more than just play defense. He has to rebound. He has to play make, and he has to knock down shots. I think those are like the three priorities for Hart: rebounding, making up, making up on the rebounding. And if you look at it, look look at look at how the, the Knicks were able to maintain as one of the best offensive rebounding teams, even without Mitch and Julius. Right? That's mm-hmm. that's Hart. So Hart is more important for me because he's got to do way more for this team to be successful, including rebounding, passing and scoring when teams leave him open. That's why I put Hart as my most important guy next to Brunson. Makes sense, CP. And, you know, with with Julius gone, missing OG, missing Mitchell Robinson, you know, the Knicks, from when, especially when Julius went down, up until now, the Knicks are still a top-10 rebounding team. Knicks yeah. averaging 44 boards per game since Julius's injury. And that... Is due to one Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein as well buying in, but those, but mainly Josh Hart just taking on that responsibility because, for the most part, CP he's been averaging double digit boards for being like one of the shortest guys on the court. Right, he stands at six four, but yet he's coming out of this game with double digit boards even tonight, right? And that's through hustle, that's through understanding how like the ball hits the rim and where it's gonna where it's gonna fall. I mean, to be that well prepared. And to get your team extra possessions or stop an opponent from getting an extra possession is critical, especially when you look at tonight's game, right? The Knicks didn't shoot well from three tonight. They shot like they shot 38.9%. Uh, yeah. Not the grace that we've seen them shoot before, but there were still a lot of missed shots that they could have had, CP. And what we talk about tonight's game and why they were able to limit the Celtics from, from being able to score is that came down to the rebounding battle. We saw the Knicks win 52 to 36. Mm. 52, 52 to, 36. to 36. Wow. And 16 of those boards went to Josh Hart. Mm. So he is so critical in what the Knicks do when it comes to winning the possession battle, when it comes to getting second chance opportunities. And I'm sure when we look at those, we'll go into those in detail when it, we look by the numbers. And you'll see that's why the Knicks won. That's yeah. why they're able to win those categories. Because he has somebody like Josh Hart, who sixteen boards, huge, crazy, sixteen, crazy, a double double CP of sixteen points and sixteen rebounds in limited in, minutes, insane, <laughs> thirty two minutes in thirty two minutes, light work for him tonight, <laughs> light work, man, light work, um, and, and just vital for this team. And Ron was talking about his passing numbers. I mean, just check check stat news. I don't have it up, but check stat news. Like, what's his what's his assist numbers looking like in like his last ten, his last fifteen? Check check it out. Let me pull it up yeah. right now. And, and while we do that, I, uh, Fred Katz on Twitter saying, I heart uh, played 33 minutes tonight. First time he's gone over 30 since before he re-injured the Achilles more than two months ago. Important step for him with the playoffs around the corner. So seems like the Knicks were able to manage his injury or the sore Achilles well, ramp him up well. And and I heart looks good, looks good as well. Over the last 10 games? Yeah. 
Josh Hart is second on this team in assists with 7.1. Brunson leading over the last 10 games with 7.8. Wow. 7.1 assists in the last 10 games. Wow. Great, great job. I mean, look, you still need guys to knock down shots to convert assists, but great job just understanding the assignment. He's so. averaging damn near a triple-double, CP. Mm. Hart's averaging 12 points, 10 rebounds, and seven assists. Wow. Big. And he's shooting over the last, this is over the last 10 games. And he's averaging 49% from the field. Mm. That's, big. That's big, man. That's big time. Big time. Great job by Josh Hart. Great job by Josh Hart. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Uh, next one, an easy one, man. 118 and 109. Over the Boston Celtics, call us up, 657-383-1509, or you can hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Anthony Paris souls out. Anthony, he says, uh, UFC 300, am I watching this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to watch, man, but I didn't like, um, I didn't, you know, the card to me is just not, for, for, for the 300th UFC, I don't know, man. Between the politics and all that, I got to get uh, Ariel on the show. Ariel Awani, he's doing a lot for, for 300. He's out in Vegas doing big shows this week. So we're going to try to get him on the show maybe um, at, not next week, maybe the week after that when the playoffs start. But I, I want to talk to him about 300. And uh, to me, the, the card is, is just not what it should be, man. You should have you should have John Jones in there. You should have Connor in there. You know, maybe maybe bring back like a Legends fight, maybe Rampage versus Tito Ortiz or something, see what they're doing. It's something like that. It just it, it just seemed very lackluster for for that type of magnitude. But I'm still going to watch. I'm still going to watch. I, I'm, I'm a USC fan for sure. Mm. Um, salute to uh, Too Cold T. Cold. It's Too Cold T. Cold. Yo, yo, me. Mike Check. One, two, oh. one, two. Can you How hear you me? Feel? Good, man. Good. How you feeling? Yeah, hey, CP, yeah. I am feeling fantastic. I have a yeah. lot of things to be happy for. I'm blessed. Yeah. I just bought my first home. Oh, congratulations, uh, man. Clap it up for two coal in the, T. Cole in the chat, man. Clap it up, man. Thank Good you job, so man. much. I have left Austin. I am yeah. now in the Houston area. And I want to shout out to KFTV because somebody um, I met at the Spurs game was a Knicks fan. Yeah. He actually lives out here. We got a chance. Shout out to Ricky. We got a chance to watch... Boston get beat yeah. in Houston and we're watching the game and they're like, Hey, uh, we got to turn this game off and put the, the Houston game on, on the big TV. And it's like, yeah. well, for what? They're not playing for anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I appreciate y'all for bringing us together. And I think next year y'all should bring KFT, K, uh, Knicks fan TV to Houston. Hey, that should be the move next year. I would love to go that to H Town, man. I would love to go to H Town. Salute, man. I haven't been to H Town in a that'd minute. That'll be the hey, that'll be the wave. And I think if we get yeah. the second seed, there should be no reason why Jalen Brunson cannot get the MVP. Yeah. Give my man Jalen the MVP. Uh, rapid fire. Y'all yeah. have a good night, y'all. Salute, salute, man. Salute to my guy Too Cold in the chat. So people saying the three hundred card is stacked. It's cool. Look, I like Pereira. You got Pereira versus Hill. <laughs> Zhang Wei Li's good. She's nice. She, she's definitely tough. I like her style. You got Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Holloway, man, that guy. He's, 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 uh, what, what do they call the guys that bleed very easily? That, that's Max Holloway for you, man. By the first round, he looks like he'll, he went all five rounds. He split open. So, so so who? Yeah. What is the card that you wanted to see? So well, Aljamain Al is on there, but like, I, I was thinking they were gonna put in like star power, you know, like have John Jones, like John Jones Stipe, you know, Stipe Miocic, have Connor versus um, who who he who he last fight that he lost to um, he's supposed to be fighting uh, what's the guy with the what the what's the guy with the cauliflower here, man? I'm forgetting the guy's name. Short guy. Who who's the guy? People in the chat. Uh, they had the Ultimate Fighter. It was Connor on one uh, one side and um, Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler. Mm. When is that fight supposed to be? When is that fight supposed to be? Uh, Connor versus Michael Chandler. You know, I thought they were gonna put like the star power. It's a UFC three hundred. There's still good fighters on there. My guy Aljamain's on there. He's a local guy. I saw Aljamain at the Knicks game uh, last month, a couple months ago. So, so then, in in your in your 
opinion then. Yeah. Based on the card matchup. Because I'm not a big UFC guy. You know, I haven't really tapped into UFC in quite some time since Brock Lesnar was was fighting. Yeah. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Lindell was in, was in the ring. That's yeah. Or in the cage, I should say. Those. That's when I used to watch. I've been, I haven't been tapped into who? for quite some time. Well, oh, Brock Lesnar. That was a while ago you used to watch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's how long it's been, yeah. man. Yeah. When I bought yeah. the UFC games, you, I used to play, create my own player, do yeah. all that type of stuff. It's been a very long time. Yeah. So, based on the card you see right now, give yeah. speak to me like it's an NBA turn. So, like, what would that matchup be? Oh, it's like, you know, like Israel. So people in the chat, Israel out of sun. You're like, Israel should have been on the card. Why isn't Israel on the card? Somebody explain to me that. Why is my guy Israel, the last style bender, airbender, on the uh, on the card? Somebody explain that. But in NBA terms, you you mean like what would be like the ideal matchup? Or what, are the, what is it now? What is These it ones? now? It's hard to say, man. It, it's hard to say. When you talk about like individual fighters, you know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of these guys, like it's not like in the NBA how you've had like dominant teams like the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, mm-hmm. Zhang Wei Li, I guess you, you could compare her to the Nuggets. She's had the belt for bad long. She's been nice. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira. He was a champion. He did lose the belt fairly recently. Right, let's see what the people think. Who who are they? Who's the NBA equivalent to this UFC 300 card? Said Adesanya, you got to wait. Is it the mid group? He says because Driscus doesn't want to fight Is Izzy. Pitbull Cruz. Courtney J says the card is good. You can't have every superstar. I just thought they would they would have tried to stack it up. Is is the marquee event 300? That's all I'm saying. I'm still going to watch, for sure. JPK to H-Town. Go ahead and I'll mute your mic. JBK to H-Town. Yo, yo, you hear me? Yeah. My, my fault, you caught me off guard. I was looking at the chat. Okay, but, no um, problem. Yo, I, I definitely second the, what the last previous caller said about, you know, coming down to Houston. Yeah. Definitely, you know, get some good food and all yeah. that stuff and watch a good game. Turkey so Leg Hut. You be at the Turkey Leg Hut, man? Where, where, you, where you be at, man? Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely like Turkey Leg Hut. But yeah. it's, it's, it's some spots out here that's better than that. That's what's what's up with Sunday like Fun Days? Is Sunday Fun Days still popping in H-Town? Sunday Fun Days used to pop, man. That's that's one thing with H-Town. The day parties were like second to none. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you can definitely find some nice day parties, so I second that. But um, so so real quick, I just wanted to say, man, because I know everybody talk about it, but Brunson, I, I was watching the game and I feel like he's really getting prepped for the playoffs and how he's going to see different types of matchups. So if yeah. you watch the first quarter, he was more so getting his teammates involved. They, they were doing a lot of high picking rolls and he was getting switches and taking mm-hmm. and, you know, um, going to the to the man that he got the switch on. Mm-hmm. He did that up until the first half. I mean, up until the end of the first half and the second half. Once he started getting into a rhythm, he was just going at whoever was guarding him, just on mm-hmm. a one-on-one. Then eventually they started trapping him. He was passing out, um, you know, repositioning, getting the ball back, and like just, just completely, just making every uh, every great decision. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's prepping himself to like have a really, really big playoff team. Obviously, I'm, I'm always nervous about Miami because Spolster always comes up with something. But outside of that, I don't really feel like anybody can figure him out. And if you can't figure him out, then I think we're going to be good. I, I, he, he's so far ahead of everybody, man. You know. And he's and he's finally getting his respect where they say he's the best player yeah. in the Eastern Conference. Somebody else said he's the one of the top guard. I think J.J. Reddick said he's top 10 in the NBA, which I think he's yeah. better than that. But he's starting to get his his due respect, and I, and I like that. It can't be a top player in the league without – being able to read and break down defenses and being two steps ahead. And that's just what he's been. You know, when and when you go back to that Fred Katz quote and and we look at how he performed in the playoffs, very few people could have solved that Spolster defense. It was Brunson, it was Jokic, it was Murray. To me. I, I don't recall anybody else killing that Spolster defense last year in the playoffs outside of those three. Those three were the ones that stuck out. Brunson, Jokic, Murray. That's it. That's it. I mean, how many points did he average in that eight series alone? I don't know. I just remember the 40-point outing. 40-point. And he did everything in his power to yeah. 
it came down to one last shot, man. Yeah. One last shot. Brunson is just phenomenal. Uh-huh. I mean, you, you, you can't. I mean, we could just talk about We could say that every single show, CP. We damn near do that every single show because that's how impressive he is. We haven't seen, you know, we haven't had anybody this talented since Mel. That yeah. has just been that yeah. gifted as a scorer. And the fact that Brunson's doing it as a 6 1 guard, right? That's what makes it that much more impressive is that nobody can stop him. He gets to his spots at will. And that's the sign of a superstar. That's a sign. That's a sign, man. So to everybody in H Town, though, man. So to everybody in the H D Dr. D Roy Bramwell in the chat. He's in the H. He represents us when he goes to Knicks versus Rockets games. I definitely gotta get out there, man. You know. Personal note, I, I did lose two close homies that that were from H Town, man. So it's kinda hard to go. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's kinda hard to go back. But back in my prime, uh, I used to be out there at least once a year. Um just just mm. visiting and, you know. Doing, doing, doing the dudes thing, you know what I'm saying? But eight, eight times, it's a great time. It's a great, great time in my life, hundred percent. But yeah, de- definitely tough, man. All right, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on Free Boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks get the win. Brunson is the guy. Let's go. Here goes Quentin Gilliam. Gilliam Al uh, Franchise Channel member says, UFC is trash. Who's going to see Devin Haney humiliate Ryan Garcia Garcia at the Swamp Dragon Center? Also, let's go Knicks. I mean, to each his own. I prefer UFC over boxing. Like, you know, Ryan Garcia, I mean, he, he talks more than he fights. And boxing these days has been severely overrated. Every big time fight to- has been trash. And they've also made boxing into a sideshow. I mean, we have Jake Paul and Mike Tyson going. There out you go. It's like, why are we doing this? There you go. Prime example. Prime example. They've made a mockery of the sport. Somebody in the chat, give me the give me the last great boxing fight that would lived up to the hype. Oh, that lived up to the hype. Yeah. <laughs> and none of, none of the Fury Wilder ones were great. The Triple G um, Canelo ones. They fought, what, three times? Two, three times? Triple G Canelo? Yeah. Yeah. They were okay. I like Canelo. I like Canelo. But boxing, boxing fell off a long time ago, man. Boxing fell off a long time ago. Like, I don't know, Haney Garcia. I watched that on the, on the, on the bootleg, man. But it's hey, sad, if you go in the man. Swamp Dragon, go ahead and watch it yourself. It's each his own. But no, nah, boxing fell off, man. Boxing fell off yeah. a long time, bro. It's sad that it's fell off, man. I used to yeah. watch boxing pretty frequently, too. I mean, the last, I think the last time I actually watched a match was Pacquiao and, and uh, Mayweather. Yeah. And that was in, and that didn't even live up to the hype. They said, somebody said Bud Crawford, Errol Spence lived up to the hype? No chance, bro. No chance. Errol Spence got dominated in that fight. You said it was good, but people said it was good? I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it, man. Freezy on the chat. Freezy, go ahead and unmute your mic. Freezy, Freezy, go ahead. Do we have Freezy? Freezy, Freezy. <laughs> Somebody in chat said Drago versus Creed. <laughs> Jake Paul versus Tyler versus Woodley. Yeah, man, they they made a mockery out of the thing, man. I, I can't take boxing seriously. All right, Freezy's not ready. Uh, Dima who? Dima who on the chat? Go ahead and I'll mute your mic. What's up? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. How you feeling? Hey, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, the next one, What's it's a good night. You know, it's not a Friday yeah. night, Dick's affair, but, you know, that's tomorrow. Let's go. Um... First of all, hey guys, I'm going to keep this rapid fire. Uh, I'm just going to say that Jalen Brunson has faced more double teams this season than I've seen anybody else face ever. And I've watched a lot of basketball through my life. And it's just yeah. like every single time he gets the ball, there's two guys rushing him and he always makes the right play. It's like watching the opposite of what Randall did. And I love Randall, but it's just you can tell that they're two completely different players because every time Randall will get double teamed, be a turnover every time Brunson gets double teamed open shot mm-hmm. um yeah and uh before i go i just want to give a shout out to the to how we all got here 
I want to give a shout out to, you know, Alexi Shved, mm-hmm. Lou Amundsen, um, Tim Hardaway Jr., Pablo Prigioni, all the 2015 Knicks, um, yeah. because without them, we would not be so appreciative of what we have now. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate the call. Pre- appreciate the call. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. Okay, who do we have here? All right, we'll see. We'll see what the boxing talk is going on. Let's, let's see what people talk about it. Uh, somebody said Butterbean. <laughs> didn't Butter Butterbean? Bean. Didn't Butterbean pass away? Butter is Butterbean still with us? I don't remember. I, I don't. I don't remember. Bovar Sovia. Yeah, I don't know. You know, the shell says boxing is fine. I. I just don't see it, man. I, I just don't see it. I mean, I'm I'm going back to the days where we had Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, you, you know, De La Hoya was was getting it in, Trinidad, Ricardo Mayorga, uh, T- uh, Cotto. What's my man that died in a motorcycle accident? Um, he was another nice one. Who who's the guy that died in a motorcycle accident? He was nice. You know, Prince Nassim Hamed. You had Zab Judah. You had F- Floyd. I mean, they, 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 it's not even close. It's not even close, man. Who, who's the guy that slumped out Pacquiao first before um, uh, before, be, before Floyd beat him? Who's the guy that, that, that like, you thought Pacquiao died when he dropped him? Um, oh, oh, wow. What's his name? Marquez. Marquez. Yes. I mean, those days, Corrales died. Corrales died. Those days. Yeah, Butterbean's still alive. He's 57 right now. Okay. <laughs> I, to me, those are young Bernard Hopkins. Come on, man. I, I, I still watch just for the love of the sports. But they, they don't captivate you the way that those guys did back in the day, man. Especially the Mexican fighters. Del Hoy and them, they used to battle to the death. Now, not that it's safe, you know. They, they put their life on the line, but it's entertaining. All right, man. Back to the, back to the phones. 347, 347. What's your name? Where are you calling it from? Sweet P. Whitaker. Sweet P was a beast. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling it from? 347. We're, we're talking Knicks. We're talking boxing, UFC. We're mixing it up. Wrestling, everything. What do you want to talk about? Hello. All right. This guy's not ready. He's listening on TV. I think he's asleep because he's got the TV on in the back. He's, he's doing all sorts of stuff. 347, uh, 357. Three, hello? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up, CP? It's Outtribe Montana. His Rambo never picked me up for the Miami game, man. Oh, man. He left you stranded, cuz. What happened, <laughs> man? Hey, listen, man. We doing really good. I like what OG Ajinobi's doing. And if Brunson don't get the MVP this year, they should put him on the cover of NBA 2K. And that's ha. a fact. He's putting up crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah, man. And uh, listen, first round, I would like Boston to play Miami so they can uh, rough them up, no ditty. And, and today I didn't see nothing much out of Boston. They always mm. choke when somebody plays rough with them. And the Knicks mm. been doing their thing. Yeah. And uh, and I'm kind of mad at Jay. Jay Cow is bugging. We mm. need Julius. Julius is a star. So is Brunson. Mm-hmm. And if we was complaining we didn't have a superstar, we don't need Mitchell. That's going to mess up the chemistry from the team. I like the way it is. Mm-hmm. And everybody's pretty much signed up. And we just keep the chemistry going. Rapid fire. Good night, boys. Let's go. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. I'm into this boxing talk, man. I mean, we got another game tomorrow night. Next one, this one of the bum night. I want to talk about boxing. Yeah, I, I got to make another channel, man. I got so much stuff I want to talk about. You know, some people got to. We can talk about Terrence Crawford. Yeah, <laughs> we, we talk about Spence Crawford, Sugar Shane Mosley. Like, come on, man. Am I lying or am I not? My boxing aficionados was 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 the earlier days, maybe like the last you know ten years ago, twenty years ago. Was that not like a great time of boxing? Way better than it is right now, or am I or am I just missing it? Sugar Shane. You know? It, it, you there's, know there's, there's not good boxing, man. There's not a lot of good. I mean, who's a name that you're going to turn on right now yeah. and say, yeah. there's a good fight? Got to lock in. Well, well, there are good fighters, but are they good fights? I just don't see. Like, I like Tank. But that's, that's, I think Devin a, Haney's a talented fighter. I think Tank Davis is a talented fighter. Like, I like those yeah, guys. But but what what's catching your appeal like? Who's got the record that you're saying, oh, yeah, I got to go watch because they're just, I don't know, man. I'm yeah. looking for a clash of the Titans, you know? That's, what, that's all I want to see. 
I want to see a fight that when you build it up and you go on and they have the press conference and they do the little fake like, you know, heat, that it actually lives up to it. I, I just haven't seen it, man. You know, how many times with Anthony Joshua ducking all these guys? He still hasn't fought Fury yet. He hasn't. He didn't fight Wilder when he was in his prime. Like, I don't know, man. It's just not there. Yeah, it's for me. Even Triple yeah, Triple G was nice 10, 10 years ago. Morales was nice. Trip, uh, Eric Morales was nice. Charlo Brothers are good. I, I like the Charlo Brothers. Shakur Stevenson, another good one. I like them. Individual fighters. There's good individual fighters. I just haven't seen enough good fights. Guys are ducking each other, you know, or, or they're just not living up to the hype. Barrera. Barrera was nice. 919, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? Peace, blessings, positive vibes. What's going on, guys? What's good, man? Shamik, you in a rainstorm? What's, what's going on, man? You're usually under karma. Uh, gotta bring the truck, man. Gotta, gotta, get, gotta keep this spot. Keep, keep it moving. Break a but, break um, of 1 9. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, rapid fire, man. We're going to lock up this. I, I believe we're going to get to 13 because we can't depend on Milwaukee and lose both games. I do believe they'll pull one of them out. But whatever it is, we're going to the ECF. Let's go. No more Julius Randall slander. And, 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 and let's uh, do some work, guys. Let's Rapid go. Fire. Peace, blessings, five, three, five, man. Let's go. Appreciate it. Be safe on the road, man. Yeah, so yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suits all our truckers out there. Be safe on the road, man. All our Uber drivers. Definitely appreciate all the work you guys do to put it in. Okay. All right, pause. All right, let's get to um, key stats of the night, Al. We forgot to do our draft tonight, bro. I think I still did some pickums. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see how I did. <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. All right. Uh, let me let me load this graphic up real quick. You know what? Let's just do it off the share screen in the interest of time. So to everybody in the chat here, just pulling up the stats, which is kind of tough to look at because both teams kind of pull the starters by the end of the third quarter. But Knicks did shoot 49% from the field. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, both teams shot 38% from three. Um, the rebounding to me, though, was when the game mattered – where is is how the Knicks really won this thing? They won the rebounding battle, fifty-two to thirty-six, and especially early, they were able to keep the, the Celtics off the glass and and uh, and ensure themselves uh, some second chance opportunities. So great job by the Knicks there. Twenty-four assists for the Knicks, twenty-five for the Celtics. Then you had fifty-six points in the paint for the Knicks, forty for the Celtics. So good job by them, and uh, largest lead, thirty-one points. What do you think, Al? Came down to the rebounding battles we discussed mm-hmm. earlier, CP. 52 to 36 is the big margin in this matchup. I mean, we'll get the second chance opportunities. 22 to 12 against mm-hmm. the Celtics. Mm-hmm. Points in the paint. Points in the paint, 56 to 40. I mean, part of that is based on gaining boards and just working the paint against the Celtics. And for a top defensive team, the fact they were able to do that with KP on the floor, with having Drew Holiday and Derek White out there, it's impressive this Knicks team was able to be so dominant in those facets of the game. So those are the big those are the big areas for tonight's match, yeah. man. But you gotta hit your free throws, people. Gotta hit your foes. Gotta hit 60%. your foes. Sixty percent. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, once again, guys, uh, remember that the key stats tonight are brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play Underdog Fantasy's daily fantasy draft as well as the pickums. For your chance to win big, man, on the pickums, all you do is choose between two to five players and predict whether or not they're going to go higher or lower than a given stat projection that Underdog Fantasy outlines on a given night. And for your chance to win up to 20 times your money, man. Wasn't a good one for you, Al, was it? I was, feel- ah, I was feeling so confident, okay. CP. I chose, I usually be going with the insured route. Yes. Because I'm like, you know what? I can win that way, and I typically do. I was like, you know what? I'm feeling confident yeah. going all in. And I missed it by one. Missed it by one. So here's why I chose. Chose Jalen Brown to have higher than five and a half first quarter points. He did that with nine. I chose Dante DiVincenzo to have higher than 0.5 first quarter, one first quarter assist. He did that. He got one assist. 
I chose Jalen Brunson to have higher than 31 and a half points. He did that, ended the game with 39. I chose Bogdanovich to have higher than one and a half three pointers made, and that was my scorcher pick. So I hit even my scorcher pick, CP. There you go. There you go. This so how, how, much, it, how much was that one worth, the scorcher pick? This was worth uh, one and a half. Okay. And here's where everything went awry. I chose I chose Miles McBride. I said, you know what? McBride has been doing a solid job hitting his threes. They had it at one and a half three-pointers made. He hit zero. Mm. I just needed McBride to hit two threes tonight, and I, won a, I would have won $125. Mm. Come on, McBride. There you, there, there you go, man. Well, better, better luck next time, my guy. And we'll be back at it tomorrow. We'll do the draft tomorrow. You got Knicks versus Nets. We'll be back at it, man. We got a doubleheader. Usually when we have the doubleheaders, I try to keep the show shorter. I try to keep it a short show. But, uh, you know, these guys these guys took it off the rails with the UFC and boxing talk, man. I was into that. Mm. And the wrestling talk. Maybe we need to do an MMA sports entertainment channel. You know, Jeff is big into it. Jeff was at WrestleMania press row, killing he was interviewing everybody. He was with the, the, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. He was doing everything. We might have to do that. You know, we, we got That's Ariel. True. We got Kaz. The chat chat was into it, man. I think we got a, a, a lot of boxing fans in the chat. And, hey, shout out to our own Remy, who does Remy's recap. Yeah. You know, he, he covers uh, UFC. He, he is a writer mm. for covering the UFC. So, you know, there there is... Opportunity. In house, there's All right, opportunity. so yeah. I fight fan TV might be the next one, so we could go in, man. I was into the boxing talk, man. Yeah, well, we should start a video game channel. Like, you know, the uh, gaming you channel. Get back on the console? I don't, bro. I barely got enough time, bro. Right now, we probably got over 300 merch orders that gotta get, that gotta get uh, fulfilled by the KFTV fulfillment team. So next week is gonna be a busy week for us. So yeah. I don't know how much time we got for uh, I, I don't know how much time we got for gaming When we got playoffs time It's money time man It's money time man There's always time for a little bit of gaming so Yeah I, I would love to get time. back on my Call of Duty grind though You know I would love mm. to get back to my elite status Prestige You Dude. know there's a, there is this, there is a faction in the Slack channel Of us trying to create a, a, a KFTV squad Call of Duty team mm. That would be good yeah. That yeah. would be good. Yeah. Okay. We're trying. Maybe We're in trying the off season. Maybe in the off season, man. Let's do you know, it. Let's trying do to get, uh, try, you know, we got the chief uh, mod and operations TM. You know, he's down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trying to get Gamba, you know, onto Call of Duty. That's that's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. You know? But we're trying out here. I and Remy plays. Remy plays too. I still got to do my, my my cooking channel. You know, I, I still got to do my cooking channel, man. I got a lot of recipes. I got to show the world, man. You know? So... That's what it is, man. Listen, to the people that called in, look, we, we would love to get to everybody, man. But, you know, we got to run a show. Uh, we do the people on the Discord get priority as well. So we would encourage you guys to become franchise channel members. Join in on the Discord. And uh, and that way you can get in a lot faster. We just, you know, we just can't have a, a two, three-hour show uh, for the replay gang. We got we to gotta keep it pushing. You, you know what I'm saying? We got we to gotta keep it pushing. Um, let's go through some of the Super Chats, Al. Uh, who else we got here? Rare edition salute. We got Fry1339 franchise channel member salute. Kenny Gales, fight out super chat. Says gross behavior by the Celtics bench. Full court pressing in a 31 point blowout. If they didn't want to play, shouldn't have played their full five. Yeah, they're kind of like, you know, going through the motions, but it is what it is. $10 super chat. When Ryan Animal Chuck D says, you need Burks and Shake also situation. We cannot create with Deuce at the point guard. I love smashing these Celtics. Uh, his was a bad sign. Tell everyone those March games are forgotten. It's playoff hardcore time. So to Ryan Animal Chuck D. I don't know, man. I think my guy's buried. <laughs> I think I don't I don't think Burks survives another one, man. I think you know Tibbs goes with the guys that he trusts. And right now, Burks ain't one of them, rightfully so, because he's, he's in just, the trunk. He he just plays by himself and not within what we we need. We need guys to play within the team concept. He's, he's just completely lost. Steelers, well, Knicks fan, in the trunk right now. He's playing in the trunk right now. Steelers, Knicks fan, seven five seven says Stephen A. Smith still thinks Grimes topping forty eight Reddish and Rod Strickland is still on the Knicks. 
Shout out to Nixon Dimes once again for uh, donating 20 franchise channel membership. Salute. Rory Campbell uh, says, Fight Out Super Chat says, Hot take. Melo will be forgotten in two years. Give Brunson the keys to the city. Well, but why is it a, 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 a one versus one thing, though? Why I don't do we like, keep doing this? I don't like why that, is, man. Why as fans do we keep doing this, man? Why, why we can't we doing appreciate bro? Yeah. Bro, bro. Yeah. I've appreciated. I've, I've put Melo's contributions in a capsule. I appreciate that. It was a hard time. It was a tough time. I appreciate that. But it doesn't mean that, you know, just forget about him because Brunson's a guy. Brunson's a guy in his own. This is his own era. His own time. It, it, Wait it, a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. I uh, see him just. TM. TM. Wow. Yeah. I'm, losing, I'm getting tired over here. Yeah. TM just told me to check the Slack, and I'm seeing that yeah. Young Stench is asking if I'm a Pats fan. Living it. Oh, wow. Get out of here. Wow. First of all, I'm a Jets fan, all right? And I wear that. <laughs> I wear mm. that proudly every single day, even though they've been torturing me. Yeah. For the last 10 plus years, all right? Yeah. Let's get that straight. Don't you ever. Ever, 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 ever Let's, put me in allegiance with any of these yeah. Boston sports teams. That's a fact. Never. That's a fact. Shout out to who we had. Uh, Nick and Knack. I think I got that one already. William Burton got that one. M- Miguel Connor, 10 dollars Super Chat says, question, if OG is unlocked offensively, could he potentially be Kawhi 2.0? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that that's a that's a big question mark. You know, he's been in the league for quite some time. He has game Outside of just three and D for sure, but you know, right right now we'll, we'll take him at what he's best at. Uh, General Torre says OG is an unassuming silent assassin that's getting it done. He's getting better each game as we head into the playoff finals. Bound 2024. Salute, salute to King Matthews Al. Says hold on, Alex. I'm jumping out the window with you, homie. If we're here and I'm not scared of nobody, especially Cry Baby Tatum. P.S. Them stickers though. Okay, so King Matthews cop the stickers on shop.nixfantv.com. Okay, shout out to uh, Russell Whiskey Al. Says, enough with Brunson for MVP. Stop, it's time to look forward. Bulldog Brunson for finals MVP. <laughs> All right, so salute. Uh, Philo PR says, Philo from H-Town. Another uh, person repping H-Town. Says, can't mm. wait to meet the Knicks Fan TV two- crew. Quick question. From 2022 to 2024, Kyrie or Brunson? Uh, gotta go Brunson Gotta go Brunson He's been healthier He's been more available And he's played better But Kyrie's still Kyrie No, no, no quite Don't get it Don't t- get it twisted I think Kyrie's Situation was more of a You know Circumstantial than Play Per se You know what I mean Brunson came into the right situation Kyrie Whatever For whatever reason Just didn't work out with the Nets And, and kind of Went wayward, but he seems to be picking it up with the Mavs, and he's still one of the best to do it. K. Walden, shout out to K. Walden, franchise channel member. Uh, Quentin Gillum, ten dollars super chat says uh, boxing was better ten or twenty years ago, but it is still better than UFC. Dudes on the ground hugging, no diddy. Boxing is a sweet science. Oh, give me a break. The sweet science. Listen, let me tell you something. If Mike Tyson does not put Jake Paul in his ass in two seconds into that fight, the whole thing's rigged, and I'm not watching. Oh, my goodness. If Mike Tyson loses this matchup, listen, I do not want to listen, hear any more. Listen, the sweet science. You know, these two are going to go into the ring, and it's going to be a sparring love fest for a chick. Okay? Don't give me nothing about sweet science. <laughs> right? You're doing a great job on social, by the way, because you open up IG. Yeah. You open up any app. Great they promotion. promoting the living daylights out of this Great fight. promotion. But don't give me none of that sweet science. These guys are going to go five rounds of love taps. All right? And that's pretty much all it's going to be. Shout because out to Chuck D. Throw a hashtag me in the chat. He said, yes, that's right, Chuck. There is no ulterior motive for me being listen, a Jets fan in New England. I don't care anything about Mike Tyson being 60. He should still be able to knock Jake Paul out in five minutes. Fast. Larry, Mike but, Tyson we're talking about. But this is the thing. But this is the thing. See, Jake Paul, like... Yeah, you can respect them as an amateur boxer, but these guys are entertainers. They know what they're doing. They picked and handpick fights that they have a shot to win or a shot to entertain. This is why they pick all the washed-up UFC guys to bring them into the ring. They bring Nate Robinson into the ring and all of that because they picked the guy. They like how they 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 went the Floyd route. You hand select the fighters that you know you can beat. But this Tyson one, to me, is, is all a publicity stunt. Like, I'm not going for it. I don't care how old he is. There's, there's no chance. 
that this thing should even go close to the distance. I'm sorry. It, 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 yeah. There's no way, man. There's no way Jake Paul should win this fight at all. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's no way. I don't care how old. Tyson could probably be 80 years old and still win a fight. Yeah. Uh, Larry Medina, $5 Super Chat says, uh, excited for the playoffs. Ready to rock my KFTV gear at the sports bars here in L.A. Jamaica Queens, 22. Salute. Says, need that WWE, UFC, boxing, CP, and Al ASAP. Salute, man. Yeah, we, yeah we'll do it, man. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. So, man. All right. Either way, man. Remember that this show is available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. Remember that it's available in all pod- audio podcast formats. Uh, we will see you guys in uh, tomorrow. We'll see you guys in less than twenty four hours. Uh, hit the like button, share button, and subscribe to the channel. Ari from Taiwan. CP is right, but Jake Paul can box. Let me see him rise up the ranks in the WBA, WBC. Let me see him do that. Uh, let me see him do that before we just crown him. Somebody said, "Oh, the Tyson thing—that's an ignorant take." Let me see him rise up the ranks in a real promotion before we just go ahead and crown him. Right now, he's a celebrity charity boxer, 